Well, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Bienvenue à tout le monde. We are uh, running a bilingual session today at NASCAD's Creative Entrepreneurship Lab. My name is Martine Durier-Kopp and I'm the Acting Vice President, Academic and Research here at NASCAD University. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our fifth and final session, notre cinquième et dernière séance. Uh, of our spring webinar series. So bienvenue and uh, delighted to have you all for a very exciting session. I'm going to start us off with our territorial acknowledgement by recognizing that NASCAD is in Mi'kmaq on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq Nation. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship which Mi'kmaq and Wolastoki'ik Maliseet peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and, and resources, but in fact recognize Mi'kmaq and Wolastoki'ik Maliseet title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. So reflecting back on the sessions that we've hosted over the last month or so, I'm elated to see the quality, the interest and the level of engagement found within these sessions. A very special thanks to our Creative Entrepreneurship Lab lead, uh, Gregory Nazaire for making them come to life. And a quick note to let you know that if you haven't been able to see all of the sessions, do not worry. You can see them anytime on our website and through NASCAD's YouTube channel. Alors, vous pouvez retrouver toutes nos séances précédentes sur la chaîne uh, NASCAD YouTube. I'd also like to extend a very warm bienvenue et merci to our panel today. Uh, we welcome Mark Bannerman, Sylvie Boisvert, Nathalie Robichaud, Martin Théberge, and a special thank you to Carrie Morellon who is uh, our, our chair for the panel today. Merci énormément d'avoir consacré du temps au CEL et à NASCAD. Nous apprécions beaucoup votre présence. Our panel is joining us for a conversation of how entrepreneurs from culturally rich and diverse communities, which you'll be hearing all about, can surmount challenges and showcase the very unique sets of assets and contributions which they bring to the creative sector. Please enjoy, and we would very much appreciate your completing the post webinar evaluation to make us uh, to help us make improvements and continue to to offer you what you as creative entrepreneurs need. Alors, uh, merci beaucoup, et je passe maintenant la parole à Greg Nazaire. Merci, Greg. Merci, Martine, pour cette uh, wonderful. Uh, Merveilleuse presentation. Thank you, Martin, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. That beautiful Thursday afternoon. Um, we're here today because we would like to basically to talk about the strength of, of a community such as, you know, the Nova Scotian community, where you have ancestral cultures that actually remains intact. We're talking about the French Acadian community, you talk about the African Nova Scotian community, you talk about the Gaelic community. So basically today is to see what are the opportunities and the challenges, opportunities being offered to entrepreneurs from different uh, cultural uh, minorities and, and uh, the challenges they, they, they are facing. So one of the reasons I'm here today is to let you know that our plan, our goal is to offer the same level of service of excellence to the Francophone community. So it's going to be, if I'm not mistaken, the first ever business development or incubation that is fully, fully bilingual, that will offer service that will be fully bilingual. So uh, for us, it's a pleasure to have the participant here today, whether from a, you know, we have it from a consultant standpoint, from a private sector and consul uh, uh, um, entrepreneurship standpoint, or we'll say to policymaker standpoint. So 
to to offer you that that opportunity and to offer you the opportunity to have you know some insights from those who actually have experienced being an entrepreneur from uh, on the francophone standpoint. Donc, ce que je voulais dire aujourd'hui, c'est de me présenter, c'est de présenter aussi le lab, juste pour faire savoir que nous on on prévoit offrir des services tout à fait bilingues parce que on croit que la francophonie c'est quand même un grand marché. Donc, il faut pas voir seulement la province ici, mais on voit le monde de la francophonie où on a à peu près 500 millions de personnes à travers le monde. Donc, il y a des opportunités, pas seulement ici, mais à travers le monde. Donc, on voudrait vous dire aussi au monde francophone qu'on est là, on est là, vous, en, en fait, aux entrepreneurs artistiques, aux entrepreneurs créatifs, qu'on est là pour vous supporter. On est là pour vous offrir des services dans la même qualité, même la, le même niveau d'excellence à vous autres. Donc, faites-nous confiance et on attend... Et, 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 et les prochaines collaborations. Donc, je passe le micro à Kera Momoela, qui va être notre modératrice aujourd'hui. Kera. Hey everyone, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, I will be the one asking the question to everyone after they make their, I'm sure, great presentations. Um, donc, voilà, je, vais, je vais être la personne qui va un peu comme poser les questions après que tout le monde ait pu faire ses présentations. Um, and so, I guess we can... Yeah, I, I guess I should say I'm currently a journalist with Radio Canada. And, uh, and yeah, so asking questions is my fun time every day. Um, c'est ça, je suis journaliste avec Radio Canada. Donc, poser les questions, c'est un peu ce que je fais tous les jours. Um, So if, if we want to just start off, I believe, uh, Mark, you're first, if you want to go ahead and present yourself. Certainly, thank you. And thank you for the invitation. It is a pleasure to be uh, with you uh, this afternoon and to participate in the discussions. Merci pour l'invitation. C'est un grand plaisir d'être parmi vous cet après-midi. My name is Mark Bam, and I'm the Executive Director of the Office of Acadian Affairs and Francophonie with the Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage. So I'll get right into it because we have sort of a, a very short span of time. So uh, one of the mandates of our office is to promote Acadian Francophone culture and heritage. And the Office of Acadian Affairs being integrated within the Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage is an, is an excellent fit because we breathe and live culture in whatever form and, and shape it takes every day. And so the nature of, of our work on culture is guided by and large through uh, a government cultural action plan where creativity and community are fundamental and it serves to lead us to focus on celebrating and sharing our culture, our creative sector and our diverse communities. And we do this through a promotion, uh, the development, uh, preservation and celebration of the province's cultures, our identity and our languages. The Culture Action Plan was published, I think about three or four years ago, and it serves as government's guide to the decision-making process on things, all things culture and by providing specific actions, establishing strategic priorities and criteria. So the overarching purpose of the plan aims to grow our creative economy, uh, to achieve cultural excellence through innovation, and at the same time, find ways to be more inclusive while honoring our diverse population, whether it be African Nova Scotian, Acadian, Francophone, uh, Mi'kmaq, uh, Gaelic, or, or newcomers to our province. The Culture Action Plan itself is designed with uh, six fundamental pillars, and I'll touch on one of these specifically for this presentation today, and it is uh, aptly entitled Economic Growth of the uh, Culture Sector. So at the heart of this plan is the recognition that culture helps drive successful economies and communities, and creativity and innovation spur a, a thriving, diverse array of cultural enterprises And from a bottom line perspective, that means economic success. And from a societal perspective, uh, it means more attractive communities. We know that places with thriving cultural sectors attract people and business because they are great places to live, raise families and work. And, and this could not be more true uh, in, in Nova Scotia. Targeting the economic growth of the culture sector is a critical piece of the plan, and this is about building profile and expanding opportunities. 
So as an example, uh, the Creative Industries Program with the Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage helps businesses and not-for-profits to export globally, targeting the music uh, industry, book publishing, craft, film, uh, design, visual and performing uh, art sectors. It is about supporting um, the, the, the cultural business where the marketplace and audience are global. And there is a, a desire to, um, to infuse our culture sector with more of the entrepreneurship, innovation, and uh, creativity that drive our province's most successful businesses. The culture uh, sector accounts for almost 3% of the provincial economy. Now that's a significant number, but there's still plenty of room to grow. And part of the challenge is making sure people and markets here in Nova Scotia and, and, and far beyond know what is happening in our culture sector. There are a lot of success stories. Uh, success stories abound, but sometimes aren't told. So this specific pillar that I speak of, the economic growth of the culture sector, is about investing, promoting, marketing, uh, uh, collaborating, and, and should benefit everyone looking to expand their enterprise in the creative culture sector. Another important piece to this culture action plan is the development, attraction, and funding of events. So events showcase the province's sport, uh, culture, heritage, and at the same uh, time, it offers an opportunity to promote local food, wine, beer, homegrown artists, and the products of our craftspeople and our artisans. So events have the ability to attract new visitors and make significant economic impact. Certainly this last year, this past year has been uh, an exception to the rule, but when the tourism season kicks back in, and it will, we will once again thrive and events will offer an opportunity uh, for important return on investments for entrepreneurs. Um, I'm just reminded moments ago before we started the conference that in a few short years, the Acadian World Congress will be held here in Clarence Argyle, and this will attract tens of thousands of people from our regions, from the US and some from Europe to enjoy you know, nine, 10 days of festivities that celebrates the Acadian and Cajun culture in all its forms and an incredible opportunity for local entrepreneurs to share their artistry on a large platform with a very large audience. From a government policy and funding perspective, uh, the Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage and, and by extension, the Office of Acadian Affairs and Francophonie are always working to review uh, and, and improve our programs to ensure they are inclusive, they're effective and they're, that they're transparent. And those reviews are almost always conducted in consultation with our, our community partners. We need to constantly freshen up our program criteria to ensure that it meets the needs of our culture sector. One aspect of our role at Acadian Affairs that we enjoy is maintaining an ongoing dialogue with the Acadian Francophone community. We in turn will share the input that we receive from the community with other departments and certainly within our own department so that the community's needs are understood and where possible uh, are, are, they are addressed and reflected in government programs, in policy and in services. Uh, I'm just gonna conclude with one thing. Uh, I opened up the agenda for this morning. When I read the opening paragraph to this event, it stated, uh, I think it said something like the world has become a global village. And I, I think this statement could not be more true and the possibilities for creative entrepreneur, a, a, a creative entrepreneur to cater to different communities in all parts of the world are quickly becoming limitless. I think the pandemic accelerated significantly a shift or, or, or rather a trend to online shopping. So hosting virtual events and boosting social media presence is a must for any entrepreneur. And one could expect that post pandemic, uh, online activity will probably remain very, very high. Also, we have to consider what businesses or sectors have thrived during the pandemic and, and will continue to thrive post pandemic. So the culture sector should be capitalizing and I guess for lack of a better word, piggybacking on those successes. And I'm thinking about uh, remote work, uh, digital platforms, game companies, um, drone technologies, delivery and transportation, which is the entire supply chain e-commerce, um, online education, remote work software. The world has changed and, uh, radically and, and over the last 12 months um, in many ways. And I think it is fair to say that 
to be successful moving forward for any entrepreneur at this point in time, the key is adaptation to, uh, to the changes that are occurring and finding innovative ways to take advantage and capitalize on those changes. I think I have to stop here to allow my, my other panel colleagues to take the microphone. So uh, thank you very much. Je vous remercie de votre attention. I look forward to our continued conversations. Great, thank you very much. So I, I'm assuming we're keeping the questions to the end. So I'm just gonna go to our uh, next panelist today. And that would be Nathalie Robichaud, who is uh, the directrice de la Société uh, Acadienne de Clare. Hi. <laughs> Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm just going to share my screen here. Do, do, do. One moment. Can uh, you guys see that? Yes, Oops. we can. All right. My, uh, my little windows are like hiding my presentation. I don't know about you guys, but anyway. So yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, perfect segue with Mark who said, it takes a village. Because I'm gonna talk about that village. Um, I'm going to talk about what uh, grassroots, how important grassroots community organ organizations and local government is for artists. Uh, in uh, minority settings, so cultural communities. So I work with the Acadian Society. That's my gang uh, three years ago. I uh, take a lot of pride in working with youth, especially in the summer. I get a whole bunch of summer students. We do all sorts of projects. We are situated in Clare in Comoville. And what we do, this is a, like a snapshot of our mandate is we bring individuals together, organizations and associations that are dedicated to the development of the culture of the Acadians and who are committed to promoting the, rich, the richness of Acadian language and the culture of our area. And 90% of that uh, goes through the arts, whether it's music or visual arts. Uh, we do a lot of theater and comedy as well. Um, a lot of artisanal work. Uh, we work with a local Métis organization quite a bit uh, and do a lot of work with them to promote a lot of their activities and artisanal work. So it's, uh, it's kind of like we're kind of a hub. Um, artists come in and see us and we go and see them. We need each other. It's a, a really great ecosystem. We do that by uh, promoting consultation partnerships and strategic alliances. That's top of the list. We do a lot of community projects, often that involved artists. Uh, we do leadership activities. Um, we do, we, I mean, our, our main area of, of um, language rights, but again, language goes through arts and culture, right? Uh, we build the capacity of our members. So we have both individual and groups as our members, if, any, if they need anything, we help them to achieve them, what they need. Uh, we are the official spokespeople uh, for the Acadian community of, of this area. And we do a lot of inform informing and spreading awareness about and to the Acadian population of our area. So community and cultural development. Uh, I just, I, I'm a quote person and I have quotes kind of written all over the place. And this is one that speaks greatly to me. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. So a good community has active members. Um, so that's where the action starts. Uh, whether you're just, um, what's what I'm looking for, an animateur, uh, a hobbyist artist or a professional artist. Uh, it really lies with the community because um, you need people to support your art, right? And, and, and buy your art or go to your show. And those people, they're in the community. So what's a great way to connect with those people is via the community. Um, community organizations and local governments generally are made up of great groups of people that um, have a certain mandate that can help you. So uh, 
they can help you because there's a lot of challenges when it comes to cultural communities, uh, whether you're a visible minority or like us as an invisible minority uh, with language, we're often very isolated uh, in our corners of the world, in our corners of Nova Scotia. Uh, we don't even have transportation to get in and out of here, even if there wasn't a pandemic. Um, it is a it is a minority setting. So in this case, we're talking about francophones in an anglophone uh, setting that can be hard um, to on your day to day to, to live your culture. And, and there's legislations and rights as well uh, that are important to know about. Um, what are your rights as a francophone in, 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 a, in a cultural community? So all these things um, we can help with, community organizations can help with local government uh, can help with. I, I would just wanna put an emphasis on local government. Um, they are like, that's where you can have a lot of action is with local government. Um, if you're talking about vitality, I work with vitality is something I work a lot with and I'm very interested in. Why, why are some communities, why do communities have a lot of vitality? It's because of the arts and the artists uh, that live within them. I have this just, I just want to go through this really quickly. This is a great book that came out in 2019. It's called Pour les modèles de vitalité, le dynamisme culturel de la francophonie canadienne en milieu minoritaire. It's an academic study. But uh, one of the conclusions, there's many conclusions, but one of the conclusions states that, I'll, I'll read it in French and then I'll translate it in English. Il semble donc que le rôle des gouvernements locaux soit hautement déterminant du développement des arts et de la culture pour les minorités francophones au sein des communautés les plus petites. So what's that saying is that one of the conclusions is that the role of local government, municipal government is highly determinant of the development of the arts and culture for francophone minorities and small communities. And that kind of blew my mind when I read that because I was like, I've never, up until a few years ago, I really didn't work with local government a lot. And since then I've started and you just have to, they work for us and they're there to do work for us. So I've been going to see them with groups of artists a lot more. I've been putting them, I've been putting theater in front of them. Uh, we actually had, uh, theater happened in the municipal chambers in 2019. Uh, it was for the, the 250th anniversary of our area. And there was an actual skit that happened in front of them in, in municipal chambers. So never kind of lose sight of that and how it's important to be involved and that these people are, are there to help you to get known and to develop your art. Um, the network, we live Martin will also agree with me and probably speak about this as well. We live within a network. Some people don't know that it exists. Uh, some people live kind of in and out. Some people live completely in. Uh, these are all organizations that work within this network that are there to help you, um, depending on what you're doing, if it's visual arts or music, music or fashion design or it's, uh, they exist and they're connected to other groups that are connected to other groups and, and they'll get you wherever. You can go through New Brunswick, which will lead you to Quebec, which will send you down to Louisiana through the Code of Ville, and then through the Code of Ville, you'll get hooked up with the Alliance Francaise, which there's, these are these Francophone kind of promotional institutions that uh, exist all over the world, everywhere in the world. And so it's just important to be connected with these groups. Um, because I've put the, the Acadian slogan, which is l'union fait la force, unity makes strength, because it's so true. Uh, if you're connected to one of these, these are, this is just a very small snapshot of a lot of organizations that work within the arts and culture sector around the world. If you're connected to one, you're connected to all of them. So I just kind of wanted to put that uh, forth. And that it's all for me. Very short, but can, uh, full of information. I hope you guys have uh, questions. There we go. Thank you. Merci. Um, 
so we'll go we'll go to the next person and again like uh you can submit your questions and then we'll just ask whatever at the end and everyone will be able to answer them um so the next person will be uh sylvie boisvert which is a painter um and, and artist so on va parler avec sylvie uh, boisvert et, uh, et voilà c'est à vous Oh, on ne vous entend pas, je crois que votre micro est coupé. <rire> voilà, merci. <rire> merci. Thank you so much uh, to NASCAD for this uh, invitation. I'm very excited to share my experience as a professional artist with all of you today, and especially with uh, NASCAD students. Donc, un merci particulier pour nous offrir cette vitrine où le français est mis en valeur. C'est très apprécié. Alors, uh, to describe myself, I create oil paintings, watercolors, but I would say that I mostly run a serenity shop. Uh, it got clear to me at the very beginning that my main goal was to create peace and spread it through my work. So I'm still amazed when a customer standing in front of my work describes exactly the emotion that I wanted to communicate when I've created this particular piece. Um, this is still a mystery for me and such a nice reward. I had the chance to study fine art in Montreal for many years, uh, duplicating old masters, but mostly their technique to then choose what I wanted to keep in my own creations. I'm also in the board of director of Curfac Maritime that are supporting professional visual artists in many ways like contracts, copyrights, advices, webinars, and much more. So I've been painting for almost 20 years now, and this is my sixth year as a professional artist. So working as a Francophone artist, I've been both sometimes a challenge and sometimes I've helped it. So first, the, the path that I choose was to sell my art by myself. I feel that the process of painting is very lonely and I really enjoy getting to know my customers. Of course, if I'm spending time selling, I'm not painting. The way that I found to help me with that is that I started to sell cards, prints, and I've after develop a way to produce my own paint by numbers kit. But my biggest challenge was certainly when I first started to sell my art in person. At that time, my English was so bad, I could hardly make a phrase and I couldn't even understand what customers were saying. I don't know how I did it, but I was so determined I knew that the only way I could learn English was to keep trying. But what I've helped at that time as well, um, because I was French and a painting artist, I was able to manage few ArtSmart program in French school. I even did one with the art gallery of Nova Scotia. I also did few community projects in Chesitcook and Halifax. Those projects were very helpful at that time, especially, and those funds that the French community receives through their organizations are helping many artists. They're very precious. Another challenge that I am still facing is that there are so many other tasks that we need to do beside the artistic work. And among the following, uh, many needs to be done in English. I sometimes ask for help or try to find the information in French. Among those, of course, we need to use social media, marketing, following with my existing customers, need to update my online shop, my website, taking picture of my work, prepare certificates that goes with it, I need to follow what I have sold. If I don't follow everything, if it gets busy, it's very easy to get lost. Frame my work, ship it, ship it. Um, thinking about new services, maybe I will um, offer people that, you know, they could rent my paintings. 
So everything has to be clear as well in order to do my income tax, of course, at the end of the year. I was lucky I found a French accountant. So after a couple of years, I now have collectors that are interested in my work. And sometimes I get a bonus, like the company who've ordered 30 paintings to offer to their employees as a gift. Those are nice recognitions that have come with time and efforts. But still, an artist's status is always fragile and we often need to start again, like presently. Um, I mean, I used to sell at the farmer's market to people who were coming on cruise ship. Uh, when the cruise ship will be back, I won't have that, that place anymore. Uh, they have changed everything. So this is, that would be a very big challenge again to find a place that is reasonable to get to sell my art. There are some, but they're more like for companies um, like made in the maritime. Somebody like me cannot afford that. So I would say I encourage anyone who likes an artist's work to encourage them when possible. It is so important to us. And I would like to address myself to your future graduate from NATSCAP. Um, maybe um, you are getting at the end of your degree and asking yourself what future will you, know, will you get? I understand how stressful that might feel, um, but look inside and you, look inside of you and find a reason why are you doing this? Find what you want to do and do it. Find the best way that works for you. I would say this is a journey but be confident, learn when you fall and get up, that's okay. And if I was able to do it, you can do it too. <laughs> thank you. Merci, thank you. Um, yeah, so again, same thing. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. We'll uh, ask them at the end. And then to finish our last person, uh, notre dernière personne à présenter aujourd'hui, uh, C'est Martin uh, Taberge, un entrepreneur avec uh, Martin Taberge uh, Consultant Inc. Um, so yeah, go ahead, the floor is yours. Bonjour, merci. Uh, really, th thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, so happy to be here today. Uh, it, it's a bit uh, challenging for me to go last because I'm, I'm going to say pretty much everything that everybody else has said. I'm just going to sum it up, I guess. Um, uh, mais je, vraiment, je, je tiens à dire à quel point je suis heureux et, et honoré de présenter avec ces trois autres personnes-là qui sont absolument formidables et avec qui j'ai eu le plaisir de travailler dans le passé. I've worked in the arts and culture, uh, management and community development uh, since even before I graduated to UN, university in 2005. Uh, my career as it is today started with one, a love of the arts, and two, a seat on the board of directors of Gallery Connection, an artist-run center in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Um, I knew a few of the artists who were members and on the board of directors, and they invited me to uh, join them on the board of directors because, and I quote, they were struggling on the business end of things. Um, and, and so I, I decided to, to join that board of directors and, and everything else is now history. Since then, I've, I've worked for a number of organizations such as La Fédération Culturelle Acadienne de la Nouvelle-Écosse or FECAN, uh, Le Réseau Atlantique de Diffusion des Arts de la Seine, Radio Halifax Metro, which is uh, Halifax's French community radio station. I've worked for Le Conseil Communautaire du Grand Havre and so on. Um, I'm currently chair of the board of directors of the French Canadian Cultural Federation, uh, and that's since uh, June 2014. Uh, I'm chair of the board of directors of the Chambre de Commerce Francophone de Halifax, so the, the French Chamber of Commerce of Halifax, since September 2018. And I am recently as well been uh, appointed or, or named, uh, I'm now part of the advisory board for the Creative Entrepreneurship Lab since the fall. And, and I'm, I'm, I was very happy to join this, this fantastic group. And thanks to the efforts of Grégory for setting it all up, uh, well done. Um, I also started a business in early 2017, and, and that's just four years ago. And uh, that came from a desire to further develop 
uh, uh, as a person, but also as a need to, uh, to, uh, for a new challenge. Uh, since then, I've been working with a, a number of organizations in the hopes of making them more efficient, more focused, and to achieve better results. Uh, I've worked mostly in the arts and culture, as well as in the community development field, and mostly I, I can't say exclusively, but mostly in French. Uh, since I started my business, I've had about 80 different contracts and one of them was in English. So I can't say exclusively, but almost. Um, and, and that all across Canada. Um, the French community, on est une communauté hyper structurée et organisée avec des liens un peu partout qui nous attirent une représentativité, ce qui nous donne aussi une force de frappe incroyable. The Francophone community is a very well organized and planned uh, with its own structure made up of, of a ton of community, community based not for profit organizations. Nathalie earlier was speaking about the network. It, it, it truly is a network to its full potential. It goes from choirs and, and, and even fr Francophone churches to a, a national representative organization, La Fédération des Communautés Francophones et Acadiennes du Canada, and then there's everything else in between. Our community might be small, but it's one of the challenges that, that we fact, uh, sorry, one of the challenges that we face is that we don't even know exactly how many people are members of that community. Uh, we've had to actually fight with uh, Statistics Canada on the definition of what is and what isn't a francophone um, and, and how the government should count us on the census. Um, in theory, in Nova Scotia, there are 29,000 francophones. Yet, if you look at the 2016 census, there's 95,000 people that said that they can speak French and English. In Halifax alone, there are just about 50,000 people who can speak French. Uh, so it, it becomes a challenge of, of connecting all those people and, and uh, it, it becomes important to be organized in that sense. Um, Comme communauté, les francophones le savent, on est très peu connu de la majorité. Uh, these are just a very few examples of, of my own life in Halifax since 2016, uh, 2006, sorry, 2006. I've been asked at a restaurant here in Halifax if I was in town for the day as someone who stopped by on the cruise ship uh, that was in town. I was told I wouldn't get any funding for my project because the artist I was working with wasn't professional, yet he was a Juno-nominated singer-songwriter. Um, I was uh, in a funding application. I wrote my application in French thinking it was okay, and I was pushed away because the jury couldn't understand my application. I was told that the scope of, uh, and reach of my project wasn't big enough when the expected reach of my project was actually 50% of the population of the community I was working with. I was told for a job application that my experience couldn't be considered and therefore that I wasn't recognized for the job because the organizations that I had on my resume uh, weren't known to the employer and when he looked them up online, uh, he couldn't understand what the website said because it was all in French. And those are just a few of my personal experiences and there are tons like that for uh, Francophone people. Uh, so now you can see that I wanted to advance myself and, and I wanted to stay in the French uh, community and that's why I started my business. Les défis pour nous, comme pour d'autres, y'a manque pas. Mais on est une communauté à part entière avec une multitude de sous-groupes aussi. Et puis on a tendance à l'oublier malheureusement. As a community, um, as the Francophone community faces many challenges that other minorities or diversity groups face. Indeed, in my Francophone community, there are people of Muslim faith, there are Black people, there are people of the LGBTQ community, and, and by the way, Happy Pride Month. Um, there are also people with disabilities in, in my Francophone community. So uh, they, the challenges become multiple. Uh, you know, some people have language barriers. Sylvie was talking to us about it. Uh, Nathalie was telling us about distances where, where uh, little groups of people here and there in the province. Um, so there, there are tons of challenges that we face. What that does is that it makes us a very, very diverse and intricate community that has challenges from within as well as from outside our community. Um, 
All that being said, I, I've been negative until now, the positive becomes now. Um, and, and back to the study that Natalie was telling us about, I, I'm, I'm very happy you mentioned that. That was a, a, a study that was commissioned by La, La Fédération Culturelle Canadienne Française, for whom I'm, I'm a chair. Um, and and uh, we're an amazing community. We support one another, and we've managed to create an ecosystem that is thriving in the arts and culture sector, as well as in many other sectors. Um, notre écosystème fonctionne parce qu'il repose sur trois éléments clés. Les artistes et les créateurs. As I said in the beginning, we need to rethink our community. We need to reflect and, and, and who we are as a group and artists allow us to do that. In addition, these artists create plays, write songs, produce movies and documentaries. They write books in French that allow me to live in French and to be entertained in French, as well as give a, a, as the fact that it gives me a sense of belonging. Um, community organizations and businesses, the second pillar of our uh, community, uh, they're the glue in a way that ties it all together. I, I, they connect artists, they create relationships between creators and the community, they act as transmitters between governments and the community. Um, Think of the driving belt in a car that allows the power to go from one component to the other. Well, that's what businesses and organizations do. And then there's governments and government agencies that Marc was telling us about. Um, at all levels, Nathalie was telling us about uh, municipal governments, provincial government and, and federal government. All three are very important. They are essential, especially for our community in a minority setting. The government offers the necessary support and guidance needed. Um, that takes many different forms, but two of the most important ones would probably be the funding as well as the regulation, uh, the acts and the laws that are set uh, uh, so that we can thrive and prosper. And then uh, it, to conclude, how does how does that all help in, in, in uh, making us a, a better business, a better artist, a better community? Well, all that, tout ça, ça donne mieux une communauté qui est résiliente, innovatrice, puis qui prend sa force de ses artistes et ses créateurs. This has given us uh, diversity in so many ways, but also some togetherness. It has uh, created a very resilient, strong and supportive community. It's also given us a better perspective and an analysis that is like no other. It's made us different, innovative, creative, and gives us strength in many ways. That changes who you are as a person, but also as an organization. It also changes the way we create as artists and the way we run our businesses. The artists and creators, rightfully so, are at the base of it all. Thank you. Thank you, merci. Um, I guess we're gonna open it up to questions and I see that people have already asked some and again, you know, feel free to ask more. Um, so I'll just start by the first question, which was to Sylvie. Um, so can you survive on the sale of your work or do you have, um, you know, another source of income and do you belong to, I believe it's B-A-N-S, I'm not familiar with that. So I don't know. And, um, and if yes, has that assisted you and how? Probably V-A-N-S, Visual Arts Nova Scotia, is what I was. Oh, yeah, thanks. thanks. <laughs> yes, okay. So I like um, uh, the, pe the person is starting by, are you surviving? Uh, surviving is a good word. Um, I mean, it's not something that is, I'm not like um, running a big business on goal. Before COVID, I would say that I was doing fine. I, you know, after a while and everything that I've put in place and uh, customers that are coming back and everything, um, I could survive. Of course, uh, it's like a bomb that have exploded and, uh, you know, everything is, uh, is, is bad. Huh? And uh, for artists in general, um, I don't belong to vans, not yet. I know I should. And, uh, but um, no, uh, not for now. So, uh, but it's a challenge, of course it is, um, surviving and uh, trying to find different ways to sell. I have opened an Etsy shop uh, that I've helped for um, the first year, I would say, but um, it's really something that uh, it's very good, I would say, not never to have all your, um, I don't know if you can say in English, all your eggs in the same basket. Huh? Um, it's very good to have many, many things uh, at the same time. So if one falls, 
you still have something else. Yeah, just a, a quick follow up. I guess you're so you're not part of of uh, Vans, but you, you it sounds like you might want to be. What would the advantage be for you? Well, exactly. Yeah, I need to look at it that closer. Um, yeah, I'll need to, uh, <laughs> to check this a little closer. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, I'll go to another question question. Um, there was a question for Mark. Um, it was with regards to the Provincial Cultural Action Plan. Can you provide a few examples of how the province will partner with businesses and artists to help them thrive? Mark? Yeah, sorry. I, I'm having... <laughs> It's a, it's a fight with my with my microphone. So thank I you know. for the question. I think one of the things that I I, I wanted to share uh, is that the action plan is actually on the internet, and um, you know there again there it's been designed with with some very important pillars. There's you know promoting culture, strengthening education, partnerships, and understanding how to advance cultural diversity, excellence in cultural stewardship, promoting creativity, and innovation, and so uh, it's a very, it's, again, it's a very broad document and it was, it's really been established for us to set out a, I guess, a critical path for us over five or six years. And of course, there would be a 2.0 version. But I think your question is how the, the plan itself is, is, is how to work with government. That's primarily the purpose of the plan. But there are business and, you know, the private sector falls into there as well. And I don't have all the details because I... I wish I had I had the action plan in front of me, but if I could suggest one thing, is go to uh, the website or government website and look for the uh, province of Nova Scotia's culture action plan, and it's a beautifully designed document and it's very clear. Again, very broad, but there are contacts and the people that you can contact within government that can give you a lot more detail about sort of those relationships that you can build. Uh, with uh, whether it be business or with government. So um, certainly, uh, if, you know, if you want to make a contact with the Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage, that would be a great place to start. We do have uh, um, a division called the Culture and Heritage Development Division. And I would say that would be a great place to start to call them and find out about. And I don't know what, um, what sort of uh, sector you're in specifically, but they cover a very large area of, of art of the arts and culture so that would be my recommendation thank you merci um yeah so um someone else uh was saying they're an acadian artist and interested in finding um exhibition opportunities next year for their work uh, upon graduation of course how can they use like the services that everyone is offering here to um, help with with costs, finding places and, you know, space that want artists to share their work. If um, if anyone has something on this, it's more of an open question for everyone. So feel free to go ahead. I can start. Well, I can, go first. Like Martin, I wear a lot of hats. Yeah. A lot of us in this in the network are like multi hatted people. So I'm also the president of the uh, Fédération Culturelle Acadienne de la Nouvelle-Écosse, the and that's a great start. Um, I think I froze. I think I froze. Am I okay? You're okay. Oh, you're good. Okay. My connection is not that great. Um, so the, the FECAN, Fédération, Fédération Culturelle Acadienne de la Nouvelle-Écosse, um, is a good start because that'll get you in the door with uh, a sit down with someone who can kind of show you what are the different programs. Um, it's just like the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, the middle person that will put you in contact with other people. Um, it's just like a, a triage kind of in the hospital when you go and then you get assessed, like that would be a good place to start. Uh, so you can just check out the website, ficken.ca. CA and contact the executive director and have a meeting with him. And from there, uh, I mean, just from experience, I can tell you that Arts Nova Scotia is a, is a good bet. Um, getting funding is not always the easiest. Funding is very specific. You know, it's like, there's this program, but it's just for this. And then there's this program, it's just for this. So it's always like 
that Cinderella shoe of finding exactly where you fit. Um, sometimes you have to be creative and find like financially creative and, and uh, sometimes it takes time. Um, good things do take time. I don't know, Martin, if you wanted to add stuff. Yeah, I'd like to add to that. Uh, merci, Nathalie. Um, I think I think Nathalie is totally right. And and again, it goes back to that that word connection or network. I, and and Fekan can definitely help you with that. Someone put in the chat, and I, I would agree. Vans and Carafat can also help you with those connections more on the anglophone uh, side of things, while Fekan will do it on, on the francophone side of things. Um, the other thing that I would say is that don't forget that as an artist, you're a business, right? Like. Uh, Sylvie touched uh, on that like you have to do your accounting you have to do your 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 like you're both the HR department and the shipping department as well as being the producer of it all right so don't forget that you're also a business and there might be some business uh, initiatives that could help you um, to for like a startup funding or for uh, I, I, um, there's all kinds of programs right now related to COVID-19 uh, where a technology, uh, you know, to purchase technology or to create a website or, or things like that. So don't forget that as an artist, you're also a business. Automatically, the two become linked. And I just add to when Natalie indicated and that, that Arts Nova Scotia is, is, a, is a good one to, to, um, to follow up uh, on. It is a provincial uh, funding agency that provides support to artists and, and art organizations, uh, arts education programs, and a number of, of awards as well. So I would say if you were able to uh, get on the website and find Arts Nova Scotia, which is essentially uh, an arm's length um, division of the Nova Scotia Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage, uh, I would say that would be a very, very good start to answer that previous question. Okay, I'll let Sylvie, Sylvie, you want to say something? Because uh, I would like to add something. What? Okay, no, um, maybe just um, you can look around as well uh, with uh, there are a few art galleries sometimes that can uh, uh, take work or um, other organization or sometimes there's as well uh, that it's not like exhibiting but it's a place that you can be seen uh, like they do um, a paint Peggy Scove that is on a couple of days when you can meet a lot of other artists and being in um, a réseau, avoir un réseau comme ça d'autres personnes uh, that's very helpful as well. Um. I would like to thank you very much, uh, Sylvie and um, Martin and Mark and, 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 and Natalie. Actually, that's one of the goals of uh, the CEL to help you navigate. I, 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 just, I just heard uh, Natalie who say, sometimes it's really, sometimes it's a trial and error, right? It's kind of like Cinderella trying to find the right shoe. Right, so a support system such as an incubator or an accelerator, basically that should be the goal. If they don't do that as a business development infrastructure, they're not doing their job. And actually, I don't know if you can reconcile what you're seeing now on your screen with your question. That's exactly what we strive to do of the CEL, right? So why I'm saying that is because with regards to mentorship to avoid the, you know, some of the stuff or to do some of the stuff, many, let's say, we can refer you to someone like Sylvie who've been there before, done that before. With regards to some, some policies or, you know, or, or even new grants or whatever it is, Someone like Mark can actually help me find, you know, the right connection with regards to final grant. You, you, Mark just details some of the steps, right? And with regards to find exhibit, with regards to find, you know, any partners, right, within the, you know, Kenyan community, Natalie can actually basically help you with that. From a business wise to think, you know, to see from a from a francophone standpoint, hey, Martin Tiberge can actually can chip in. That's what we're trying to do now. And what you have on your screen, it 
actually summarizes what we have in mind. It's basically to become that nexus, to become that support system where someone, okay, like Jennifer, okay, would like to basically start or find an exhibit, whether it's in Nova Scotia, whether it's in Quebec, we have connections, we have partners, we have community partners in Quebec, we have community partners in Europe. You need that, you need, oh, you know what? I'm interested in, you know, going in Belgium or in France, or then we can see what we can do. So find you the information, support you, help you navigate, you know, the system, the, the whole the whole ecosystem. So um, hopefully, uh, you know, you, I'm not saying you have your answer, but at least you have an idea of where, where to go. That's what I want to add. Yes. Yeah, I, I know yeah. recently become familiar with the idea of associating artists and entrepreneurs and that in the end, you know, you're, you're kind of like both at a time. Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, but to go on, there was a, another question for uh, Martin and uh, it was, is it more difficult for artists from minority communities to break through into more of a mainstream culture? And uh, yeah, I guess what what would you have to say on that? Well, I, I think the experience will change from one person to the next. However, uh, I would say that um, if you're, for example, what I know best is Francophone artists uh, that want to uh, live and work in, in the Francophone community, then automatically you're segregating yourself from the Anglophone community, right? So you, you want to be very careful with that. Um, and we've seen, especially in on the music uh, industry, we've seen tons of Francophone artists from everywhere across Canada um, that moved to Montreal because that's where the French market in Canada is. And, and so there is sometimes the need to go to Montreal to get known, and then you can come to Nova Scotia. Not all artists have to do that, but it, it does create some challenges. Um, I've seen programs uh, uh, for like national agencies uh, that were offering free training in their studios. Like the National Film Board will offer any filmmaker uh, the use of, of certain studios that they have. Well, their studios are in Montreal. So if you're from Vancouver as a Francophone artist, uh, your transportation will probably be more than the guy who lives in Longueuil and can take the subway to get there, right? So there are some challenges, of course. Uh, that being said, it's not impossible. Yeah, and, and to, to add what, because Martin just mentioned something that is extremely important. When he said the, the person can actually live in Longueuil and you just take, you know, just take the subway, like say 20, 25 minutes max, you get to downtown, uh, Maison, um, you know, Maison Neuve or whatever. And it is literally the cluster. And unfortunately, for an industry such as the creative industry in Nova Scotia, okay, that actually amounts to up close to $1 billion a year, we don't have a cluster, okay? We don't have a cluster, let alone a Fakufan cluster, right? So mainly what you have, you have that, you know, that artist, he has to go because he has to leave. But one thing we, we learn about COVID and I think Mark kind of like uh, articulated very well, is the possibility you, you see, you have, right? To actually to collaborate and to keep working sometimes full time, right? Fully just online by distance. And, and I think this is something we have to take it seriously. I, I'm a business person, right? Um, I, I cannot pretend to be a great artist or whatever it is, first and foremost. And I think now this is an opportunity for any business to see how you can move literally to broaden your, your perspective and your market, right? Without living, without living Nova Scotia. C'est pas la peine de te déplacer. La francophonie, this is, the francophonie is 500 million people. And, and I think, um, 
Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to go back to what Mark said way early in, in the presentation. We live in a global village. Everything can be done from pretty much anywhere, and the pandemic has definitely shown us that. Um, I, I've been, I've had more meetings uh, than ever before because I didn't have to spend two days on the plane to get to the meeting and then two days back, right? So like, the possibilities now are endless. You just need to find your niche market and you need to, to, uh, to, to attack it from tools that will work for you and for that uh, market. Right. And uh, one of the things too, it's if we want to go back to that cluster, that cultural cluster, we lack, especially we got to your Francophone community, Mi'kmaq community and African Canadian communities too, right? We have those challenges. It's a lack, I'm gonna say that again, a lack of cohesive or even overarching strategy from, from, uh, from, uh, from the provincial government, even the federal government, right? We have programs, but they, you know, once, you know, they, they're all over the place, basically. Because we have another question here that will tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Because someone, I think we're gonna address that, someone talk about the rent here in Alpine. Okay, can you survive with the rent? To be honest with you, a crazy strategy from any government, the municipality should know what the province is doing and the province should know what the federal government is doing with regards to cultural policy, which means in some cities down in the States and even in New York, I'm not saying every artist, but in, in a good, you know, I'll say a vast majority of the time, you don't have to worry too much about rent because sometimes you have low, very, 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 very low cost, right? Uh, 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 properties you can actually have access to because of the policies the city has to facilitate, you know, to help those artists. You want to set up shop, you want to have a, a studio. Hey, we have, you know, a couple of, you know, empty buildings. We're just going to have to, you know, kind of, you know, improve them just a bit, clean them up. And then you, we can offer some low, you know, low rent, you know, and, 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 and you know, facilities for you. That's why I'm saying when we say we have to have a, you know, o no overarching strategy. It's not just tax breaks, okay? It has to be, that tax break has to go along with something else, right? And like we mentioned before, rent price, it's one of them, especially for, for struggling artists. You need your atelier, you need your workshop, you need space to work. How do you afford, how do you afford, you know, uh, two or three, I don't know, 400 uh, 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 square feet, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, you know, in Halifax, it's hard, right? Sorry, yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, uh, I guess there's another question for um, Nathalie. And it's more about like uh, the organization, uh, and it's you know um, it's it's a nonprofit, right? And yeah, okay. And so like, where where do you get your like? What is your primary source of income? How do you operate? Yeah, so being a minority has a lot of for obvious reasons, but it also has advantage is that we get a lot of government funding, uh, primarily through the federal government, the Official Language Act of 68. Uh, so we have operational funding that allows us, not, not, not tons, but enough to pay our lights and computers and, and salaries. Um, and then we're just project-based. So we have to be creative like you guys and uh, think about projects, go, go get funding and carry out those activities. Uh, we do have a bit of provincial funding thanks to a wonderful program. I'm just going to give it a shout out. It's the license plates. You can get a little Acadian flag on your license plate um, in all the different Acadian and Francophone regions of Nova Scotia. And that money, that 50 bucks, comes right back to the organizations such as myself. Because there's, there's one of my organizations in every Francophone community. There's one in Argyle, there's one in Halifax, there's one in Chitty Camp, right? So that money on that license plate comes back to us and then we give it 
back to the community through some sort of act activity. Uh, I primarily, primarily use it to pay artists to do something because uh, it's not mine, you know, it's, it's the community. So um, yeah, we just have a lot of different funding and thankfully we have operational funding that allows us to, to operate. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, there is also another question for uh, Sylvie, and it's, uh, what do you think about the ongoing proposal for a national living wage for artists, and um, which has been a C-A-R-F-A-C, again, not very sure about what that is, uh, but the, yeah, the ag agenda item part of it. Yeah, CARFAC is working very hard to uh, help artists, you know, to being paid uh, what we should uh, get paid in every different, uh, let's say we made a presentation or uh, things like that. They have really um, put in place a barren that we can rely on and uh, have, you know, good um, reference on that. And as well, I mean, any help, would be so welcome. And I know that they're working hard on that, trying to find a way to help artists because um, like I was saying before, it's so hard to get something that is uh, going for a while. If you find a contract, then you always need to find another one and um, or new customers or uh, it's something that um, it's really challenging. And of course we're, so um, low pay, if I can say, uh, comparing to um, any other um, job, huh? any other uh, occupation. So um, I'm, I'm confident that, um, I mean, we'll see, we'll follow that and see what, what will come um, from this. But any help is always so welcome. I, I'd like to add to that, if, if I can. Um, I, as I mentioned in my presentation, I, I'm involved with the French Canadian Cultural Federation. So everything arts and culture, as well as cultural industries in, Fran in French across uh, Canada. And um, we've been also talking a lot about this. And, and like, the studies show in, in many, many provinces that, uh, not provinces, sorry, countries across the world, that it's, it's helped tremendously. Yes, artists, but not just artists. It's helped uh, on the society societal level, a, a, a tremendous deal. And, and what we're seeing right now, I think a lot of the issues that were spoken about before the pandemic have been really highlighted by the COVID-19 pandemic, where uh, all of a sudden we have artists that, that can't make ends meet because they, all their shows have been canceled or because they're, they're like Sylvie was telling us that she was um, selling at the, um, at the uh, um, terminal, uh, the, um, for um, the cruise ships and, and whatnot. So a lot of artists are now struggling. And what we also know from, from many other provinces is that our industry is probably one of the last one that will get back on its tracks once this is all over. Like this will be a long time coming. It's very unfortunate. So any kind of support, it could be a, a national living wage, but there's also a lot of things that are being advocated right now. Uh, New Brunswick has a, uh, is um, doing a huge study on the provincial level for uh, the, the question Yes, of course, it, it ties into the wage for artists, but um, what about uh, um, uh, social insurance or, or, or you know, uh, medical insurance for artists? It, it becomes very, very difficult. What if you're creating a movie and it, it takes you two years of expenses and then on the third year you have revenues and you're, you're taxed way more on the third year, yet you had losses in two years. So why can't we spread it out? And so there's all kinds of policies that can be set in place to help artists and creators across the country that are summarized in the national living wage uh, um, um, advocacy, uh, advocacy right now, but that could be way more than, than just that. Yeah, thank you. Does anyone else want to add on this particular one? I feel like it, it probably, like, you probably are all somewhat familiar with that and how, you know, um, it can help in anything, so. Yeah, I, and, and, it, it comes back again, like Martin just mentioned, the policy, the policy. What policy do we have? Because why are we talking about right now? We talk about barely, you know, we talk about like living wages. It's because 
first of all, the support is hard to find, right? It's not going to be, sometimes even if you're earning $500,000, if you cost $500,000, guess what? You're still poor, right? So why are we talking about, why are we talking about living wages? It's because the support is not around. And when I say the support is not around is even if we have grant here, grant there, not only they're all over the place, but they are not enough, right? And sometimes it's not just the money, but clear the path for, for the artists. That's what economic you know, policies are about. They are not about just you know, to fund big businesses, but to help small businesses as well, to help, uh, uh, um, to help young artists uh, uh, um, as well. So comes back to the policies. And honestly, we cannot fix any minimum, as far as I know, minimum wage, because that's a trap. But however, as a business person, I would say that's a trap. However, offering more support, helping, Institutions such as mine, Martin Institute uh, 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 firms, helping Sylvie, helping Natalie to help artists. That's what good policies is about, right? And that's why we talk about living wages, because the opportunities and the support are not there, right? So that's what I want to have. Yeah, sorry. I tend to talk too much. <laughs> oh, thanks. I mean, you know, we're getting everyone's opinion, everyone's advice. This is what we're here for. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I guess like um, going back to like selling at like, a terminal like cruise ship um, and to like tourists like that, you know, people that are just coming and going. Um, there, there is a question on that. Someone's friend uh, regularly sells there and they told them that, you know, um, those people don't really want to spend too much. They're probably looking for like smaller stuff. So yeah, like, do you have any comments? Is, yeah. is it okay for them to keep on doing this? Do you have advice? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's tough. I would say it's not something easy. And um, it's true that a lot of people, and it, I mean, it just to depend as well on which cruise ship was coming. They were a very bad one and they were a better one. But, um, and this is a little bit why, because I have started to uh, produce those paint by numbers kit because I realized that yes, there's a lot of people that they don't want to spend much. Not everybody is ready to pay two, three or $400 for a painting. Um, not if everybody has the space as well home to put this. Sometimes uh, when you've already bought one, you don't need two. So I realized that the vendors that were selling stuff that were less expensive, yes, they were doing better. Uh, but that being said, um, I did, you know, um, I, was, I was okay. <laughs> I was still selling paintings and yes at the end I was happy with it but it took I mean the first years were uh, very struggling um, maybe there are other ways you know that are um, easier or, or better but um, that's the way that I found for those years to do it I don't know if it's yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm understanding we need to wrap up, but I kind of have it like a final question for everyone, which is, you know, if if you were starting right now or if to anyone that is starting right now, what what do you think would be the best advice you could give them? And anyone can go first, just, uh, yeah, if you, if you have anything to say, I'm sure. Start with first. Here. Yeah, uh, go ahead. My advice is to just connect with your community. That's just how you get known. And I mean, it's kind of tricky right now with COVID, you know, but it's going to open up and change up again. And we're going to be out in coffee shops. And um, I just wanted to mention one example for a while. We, the FACAN, had a partnership with a local law office. Um, and we would put, we'd put artist paintings in there. So something super simple, right? Um, community 
legal law office and it worked for a number of years you know it's just because of covid we kind of had to switch some stuff around but it's what i'm trying to say is just be present in your community and know your community thank you anyone else uh, wants to say something i can go I, I i'm going to go back to the word that i've used often and natalie's used it and sylvie's used it it's all about your network use it build it entertain it don't go it alone and then once you've got that go for it network it always comes back <laughs> and yeah that's a good that's a good way to start you start with when Ma, when natalie say your community you start with first with what you know okay you start that's that's a way you can as again from a business standpoint that's one of the ways you can mitigate some from some risk you actually you go and you connect with your community because that's for now that's what you know then you can go you can sometimes you know most of the time those of us who actually got just a bit more successful, sometimes they outgrow the segment they were in. And once you outgrow it, you have to have a good strategy to do that. But to start with your own, you know, your community to build your network. And because network, it's extremely important. There's a lot of stuff I've done in my life, I was able to do in my life, it's because of the network. And one thing I, you need to understand, you need to remember having a good network and to have it as good currency, it all about respect <laughs> and reliability. It means you don't have to create a bad reputation when you have your network, right? The first and foremost, you need, people need to understand, okay, uh, Martin just called me, Sylvie just called me, or Kira just called me, let me answer the phone. Right? Let me answer the phone. It's, uh, it's all about how serious you are, reliability, seriousness, and uh, you start building a brand. And then when it comes time to overgrow that community, to prepare for bigger, for bigger market, then, hey, you're going to be there. But at least you have some strong foundation. That's my comment. Yeah. Anyone else? I think Sydney might, might have had something to say. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll agree with everyone. And I remember when I have first started, I've um, with La Fecan, I had a, a lot of help. Martin was the director at that time and helping me uh, make a plan and, uh, you know, fix my goals and everything. And that have really helped um, join association like Carfac and uh, or certainly Vans that you will, you know, get with other artists and you get a lot of information or opportunities that, you know, very often artists are going to share together. So um, this is what I would add. Yeah, thank you. And maybe Mark, do you, did you have anything you wanted to share on that? So I, 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 uh, I love the microphone, it hates me. So apologies for that. <laughs> So, um, um, you know, it's really about you and your cultural business and you may be rooted in Nova Scotia, but your marketplace and audience is global. And I agree with what Nathalie and Martin and Greg have said, networking is really important. But the other thing too is go global, think big, take non-financial risks and apply your creativity. You know, access to funding is increasingly competitive as the number of di and diversity of arts organizations uh, rises and, and, and I think keeping an arts organization healthy in Canada is a balancing act between time spent on administrative and artistic work generating private and public revenue sources and worrying about the financial piece uh, but somehow you know the, the cr being creative uh, will uh, hinder um, your, your art form so I think it's really important to start thinking about going global and to uh, to look at how the internet could benefit your, your art and, and your talents. So be creative and take those, I always say risks, non-financial risks. Going on the internet doesn't cost too much money. 
Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I, so I, I believe that that's the end of it. Uh, everything was so interesting. I learned so much listening to everyone today. Um, and thank you for the great questions. Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, Gregory, if you want to give the final word or, um, yeah. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Kara, for moderating this. And thank you for everyone for, for coming. Thank you to Natalie. Thank you for Mark. Thank you for Sylvie. Thank you for Martin. I know you, you, know, you folks are very, very busy, entrepreneurs, leaders, and um, consultants. I know time is of essence. I usually say that, and business time is a little bit money. <laughs> little bit money. <laughs> it is money. So I know uh, that's, that's a lot for you, and uh, we appreciate that. We are very, very, very grateful for this. Uh, to help us building the case so we can help, we can help all this, we can help our, our, our cultural minorities, we can create that leverage. Because um, if we take a look around us, high tech, we have plenty of different organizations. You literally, you kind of like, you turn this corner, you find support. So uh, we wish one day we'll have the same. And when I say the same, I'm talking about on a provincial level, even on a national level. And we have partners, we have great folks uh, up in uh, 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 Cape Breton. Um, so uh, that's good, but we need more and they need more. So we can, uh, we can help, or we can help uh, uh, entrepreneur like, like Sylvie, we can help, Natalie help them or and Natalie can help us too. And um, thank you very much. And um, next time around we will tackle the same the same issues but from the Mi'kma uh, 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 standpoint and then from the African Nova Scotian standpoint. Once again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you Kara for accepting. Thank you very very much. great job moderating the whole thing. We really appreciate that and um, hope to see you another time. You want to close it down, uh, Kara? Yeah, I mean, thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure talking with all of you. And uh, yeah, good luck, everyone. I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.